कैबिनेट में मेरा वरिष्ठ कुलीग श्री धर्मेंद्र प्रधान जी और एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट से संबंधित अधिकारीगण पोस्टल डिपार्टमेंट के उड़ीसा के पोस्टमास्टर जनरल और भुवनेश्वर और अन्य भागों से आए हुए उड़ीसा के वरिष्ठ नागरिक थिंकर्स लीडर्स इन द सोसाइटी पुनः आप सबको धन्यवाद नमस्कार बिकॉज इट्स अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड माय अक्वायर्ड नॉलेज ऑफ हिंदी वुडन बी एडिक्वेट टू से व्हाट आई वांट टू से पार्डन मी आई विल स्पीक इन इंग्लिश द न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इज अ वेरी प्रोग्रेसिव पॉलिसी it's a result of so many so many different people putting their minds together and extensive consultation i am not sure if there is any policy made in any country which has gone through such rigorous consultation as the nep and even after it was put in public domain the inputs which have come have been gone through with similar rigor and the policy has been fine tuned polished refined and we have a excellent policy in front of us a singular feature of that policy is that it is a flexible policy it's not something which delhi decides and imposes on all the states it's a broad framework and then the states are left to adapt it according to their requirements and that's where the language and its emphasis comes into play india has always had this grievance that at the cost of building knowledge in english or proficiency in english are we reaching a stage where we are forgetting our mother tongues we reach that stage a lot of discussion happens on that and uh, there has always been this question of three language po policy whilst most indian states have agreed to implement three language policy there are some which don't want a third language so that is one side of the story but if a state has understood the importance of teaching in mother tongue there are some communities within this country if i have understood uh, right the discussions which have been on um, the fact that orissa was probably the first linguistic state now if that is the principle with which many more linguistic states were formed you would presume that in those states the respective mother tongues would be given emphasis and i think largely that is what is happening however those who speak about the diversity of this country forget that even among the 18 scheduled languages within that you have several dialects which don't naturally because they are dialects don't have a script of their own but yet communities depend on the rich inherited uh, benefits they have because of the language in which they speak it may be a dialect but it still brings in a rich heritage now if we were to look at it therefore from the point of view of states linguist linguistically divided states promoting a particular language then it's also a question of are there other languages within that state which also need great emphasis and that is why today the um, effort made by the education particularly the ncrt to get primary books for promotion of those dialects which need to be cultivated now i can take only general examples of language mother tongues which give us a richness a richness and also connect with the nature with which each of these environments live 
For instance, a person with Rajasthani as his language and the background with which Rajasthan uh, is ordained or given its natural topography will have its own richness in its language as compared to, let's say, states like Orissa, states like Andhra Pradesh, and states like Tamil Nadu, which are on the coastal region with a lot of uh, the sea and also rivers which are flowing into the sea. 